movie's gonna flop Our mind's about to pop But enough of that noise Time for the B-roll, boys! Welcome to another drug trafficking episode of B-roll, boys <laughs> Today we bring you 1986's Out of Bounds. <laughs> he didn't even ask for an adjective. Like, he had that ready to go. You can the, tell that these are not rehearsed. That's, that's, the, that's the first thing I wrote down. <laughs> Welcome to another child soldiering episode of B Roll Boys. <laughs> St- starring anyway. Anthony Michael Hall. Today I'm your host Wes, and with me I got my partners in crime, Justin Harlan. What's up, boys? Hey. Uh, if, uh, Just out here drug the trafficking. Blue. I mean, uh, hi. Uh, so, um, much like our uh, our previous movies that I end up picking, not a whole lot goes on with this one. So, <laughs> and it's from the. Years between 1985 and 1999. Those were the golden years. The, the, and this shows more than most that this is the true age of cinema. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Uh, I mean, does it really get more cookie cutter than this as far as like action thrillers go? It just They just happened to throw Anthony Michael Hall in it like that was going to be a good idea for an action for movie? For some reason. Cookie cutter implies that there's a certain level of competency that this does not have. This is like... I don't know. It feels like an action movie insulated in pillows. <laughs> because the acting is really held back and muted. Like, the action is fairly held back. I don't think I've ever seen a less threatening presence on screen than Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, at, a, <laughs> at one point, Justin said, uh, like, there was such a lack of, of urgency in, in Anthony Michael Hall's uh, performance, it was like watching Napoleon Dynamite in an action movie. And it, it, it 100% is. Like, I couldn't think of a better way to describe it. And yeah, the action, I, I have to agree. Like, it, it felt like this was everyone's first action movie because, like, like the, the, like the, the fight choreography is just so off. Like, like I, I'm going to get right into it. There, there was one scene where, like, uh, where uh, uh, the bad guy, Jeff, what's his name? He, like takes this this you know like street dude's head and he like he like hits it on the on the steering wheel of a car right and he like attaches his earring to the steering wheel so it's a st- earring wheel right if you will wheel, yeah. and but like yeah like the motion where he like slammed his head onto the steering wheel it was so fake like there was like it was not believable in the slightest there was clearly no force behind it like this dude like willingly like jutted his head forward yeah whenever there's supposed to be any kind of like violent like physical contact you can just tell it's just so far away from whatever they're trying to hit yeah and uh it's funny you say that this is everyone's first action movie because i'm pretty sure that it is like I, <laughs> like this is one of the most barren imdb pages i've ever seen if you look up out of bounds and go to the director it's richard tuggle and <laughs> For some reason, somehow he wrote the screenplay to Escape from Alcatraz, which is kind of a classic. I guess it's more of a boomer classic. But boomer. Um, so then he was from that. I guess you know he knew Clint Eastwood. He was able to direct and write Tightrope, and then he wrote an episode of Tales from the Crypt, and he directed this, and that's it. <laughs> he, he, he wrote and directed a Clint Eastwood movie, Tales from the Crypts, and Out of Bounds. That's quite the resume. He was the necrophagist uh, of bad 80s directors. <laughs> and uh, that Tales from the Crypt was 1990, and he doesn't have a single film credit since then. I don't know why. Cause clearly Hard to this, imagine. This was some creative genius just stirring up there, like a little hamster wheel going off. Like he was ready, to, he was ready to make it big. Um, I guess we should kind of you know, lightly get into it. So we got our uh, we got our nice little redneck boy from Iowa, and the the state of our Lord featuring Slipknot. <laughs> this is like the stupidest like setup for a movie. Fucking Red Dawn had more lore to it, or like at least Red Dawn got going really quick. Dude, that's that's one reason I love Red Dawn. Okay, so that's not just me, right? Like, it, it took a long fucking time for shit to start up. Yes and no. If it had a point, but, like, the first ten minutes of this movie is, like, exposition of his background. Basically, he's, like, a farmer's son. He has a brother. 
and they the dad wants them to work on the farm the mom doesn't she wants them to go do something else other than farming can't really blame her uh then they're going to get a divorce i guess and then he goes to visit his brother in la and then you never really hear anything about the parents again that whole arc is just gone yeah well, I exactly i don't really know like, why we need that i don't know why we needed the parent scenes at all yeah for how much time they spent setting up his backstory like n- like really none of it was important that's true. It might have been just tagged on there to uh, hit the hour 30 mark. <laughs> but, but it's so weird because it, it feels like there's a lot cut out from this movie. Like, because uh, we'll get to this later, but like for so much of this movie, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Are, are you wanting like a Snyder cut of Out of Bounds? <laughs> no, I will. I will sleep just fine without it. But I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> I really and I don't know anything about the backstory, like behind the production of this movie, but I... If I had to guess, it looks like this was supposed to be at least half an hour longer and that it was cut down because there's a lot of different jumps between unrelated scenes that don't make any sense. And like there's no connection to any of them. So it just kind of like pitters around. And I don't know how I don't know how really how to describe it. It just feels like there's a lot of cut stuff like there, there there's scenes missing from between the sequences that would actually make sense because um like around the middle of the movie uh you know there's that part where they're like going around la uh just hitting up different different clubs and like trying to like spread the word that they've got drugs and like i i said that like i was like why have we introduced like why have we established like four different locations in as many minutes like why are we bouncing all over the place What, what is the point of this and you guys explained like oh they're trying to establish the network and i'm like yeah but like if that's the case, why not present it as, like, a montage, you know? Like, they spend so long, like, like you know, using the presentation to establish these locations, and then we're just on to the next thing in a minute. Like, and it's just make shitty it a, nightclubs. Just like. make it a montage. Like, yeah, why does this need to be anything more than that? That's true. It, w- it did seem like a lengthy montage, but yeah. um, to get to that, basically, he goes to visit his brother in L.A., and he has the same exact duffel bag that a drug dealer who just, I guess, carried heroin on a plane, <laughs> was waiting <laughs> was waiting for his bag. It was a different uh, time. <laughs> I completely forgot that's what happened. Yeah, I totally so forgot. The whole movie centers around du- a duffel bag mix-up, like a fucking Home Alone plot. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks up the drug dealer's duffel bag full of heroin. They said 10 keys of heroin. I definitely have no idea what that means. And then... <laughs> <laughs> they drive off with that the drug dealer opens it up and he's got like a bunch of dinosaur tidy whities in there he's like what the fuck is this <laughs> this this isn't my heroin <laughs> he just finds a bunch of piss jugs <laughs> and thank and thankfully his brother's license plate just says contractor so he found him in like five minutes like if you're gonna carry 10 kilos of heroin on a plane at least put a name tag on that bag <laughs> Come well, on. I guess I guess AMH should have used the name tag too. Yeah, I mean, he, he could have. Really, they're both kind of at fault here <laughs> for a poor organization. Yeah, <laughs> but um, they look really silly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the the next day, um, AMH, our boy Anthony Michael, he wakes up, goes into his brother's house because he his brother sets him up in like a, a guest house out back. So he goes in the main house. He sees his brother and his wife dead. I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, what's with that guest house? It's like it's like a dwarven like, door. <laughs> yeah, it's like he like he's like, hey man, welcome to your to your you know your room, and they like walk up to this like vine wall, and there's like a secret door that leads into yeah, it. Like, rightfully who the fuck so built that. Rightfully so, Anthony Michael Hall's like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, huh? <laughs> check this out, my boy. And then he just like the hedge just opens up, and he's got like a Minecraft like <laughs> base in there. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, guess the, the point whole of point of it being hidden is just so the killers don't find him. For all the Zoomers in the audience, Anthony Michael Hall is the nerdy guy from Breakfast Club. Yeah, because if AMH wasn't hidden in that fucking Minecraft bunker, then the drug dealer would have just killed all of them, took the bag, and then there wouldn't be a movie. And we wouldn't want this movie to not be made, right? <laughs> right? Oh, right? No. I just really want to know the logic behind... Hey, remember that kid in Breakfast Club and Weird Science and 16 Candles? Let's make him Harrison Ford. 
I guess. Yeah, like I'm surprised the precursor they didn't search the fugitive. I'm this really is kind of the plot of Shooter. Kind of. I know it was like 20 years beforehand, but still. Oh, like, and, and speaking, you said you said a very powerful word, logic. This movie has zero. There's just a lot of really weird, unbelievable things that happen during this that just kind yeah. of catch you off guard. Like, he goes in the house, um, and he opens a cupboard, and then his brother's dead wife just falls out of it. Like, it was placed there waiting for him to stumble upon it, even though they didn't know he was there. <laughs> like, why would they do that? Because they just left his brother's body just sitting out in the open. Yeah, they didn't bother to hide him. <laughs> it's a metaphor. So, it's true. Uh, and, this, and then immediately after that he picks up a gun that was like next to his brother's body and i don't know who the fuck came in i guess it was like a neighbor or something he comes in and he's like no wait i didn't do it and then he just pulls the gun out on him and like he's gonna fucking shoot him and then he runs out of the house looking guilty as fuck and he also he also like he points the gun at the guy in the weirdest fucking way i mean like again like i really it's really seeming like this was his first action movie. Uh, you can just tell just by looking at it. Um, like he like point he like extends his arm to point the gun at the guy, but then he takes his other arm and extends it to his right under his other arm that's holding the gun. So he's doing like this weird pose like this. Like, like why? Who and, shoots a gun like that? And him not knowing what he's doing like is that. inherently not bad. But nobody else knew how to tell him to make it better. Because <laughs> this was everyone's first action movie, I guess. Yeah. So, like, uh, immediately he's on the lamb. I notice this movie is rated R. It's a kind of weak R, though. Oh, big time. Like, there's only one, like, really juicy death in it, and the rest is kind of dumb or boring. I don't really remember anything really juicy. What happened? When the dude gets blasted by the shotgun at the end, and that's the only, like, real juicy death in there. Yes. Where I was yeah, like, yeah, a- and then the movie ended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a very light R. Um, I was like, well, yeah, we go go Tuggle, my boy Tuggle. Well, this was the <laughs> mid-80s where they were still flirting with the whole PG-13 thing. It was pretty new, so maybe they just didn't know where to put it. Like, if they took out two of the fucks, then this would have just been a PG-13 movie. Totally. Or maybe they just added those in there so they could say, look how dark and edgy this is. I'm going to make the next big thriller with Out of Bounds. <laughs> <laughs> you you with me, Michael AMH? Hall. Yeah, we've got Michael Sarah Light here as our action star. <laughs> yeah, I'm really surprised they didn't at least have him like get jacked for the role, you know? Like, cause he's like, <laughs> like I could beat this guy up. Like, <laughs> I just want to imagine Anthony Michael Hall like jacked up like The Rock. He I mean, he, he doesn't need to be like Christian Bale. Anthony he Michael like, Rock. Because, I mean, like, part part of the point of, like, a lot of this movie is, like, him, like, transitioning from, from like, a, a bumfuck Iowa farmer to, like, this cool, tough guy in town. So, like, I can understand if they, like, if the kind of the point is for him to be a little bit, you know, nerdy and out of his element or out of bounds. But, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. Like, you should have at least had him put on some muscle because, yeah, like, I could beat the shit out of this guy. Like, Dude, this guy sleeps in his shoes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the, the first things I noticed that pissed me off. He woke up in his shoes. That means he wakes up ready to kick ass. Yeah. That means he's got weak seed. <laughs> that means he'll never have male heirs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but can we, can we talk about when he goes on on the lamb? No. Because, like... Oh. Go on. I give you permission. <laughs> Thank you. Wes, this is why you're my favorite. Oh, oh thanks, so they go. So he goes on the lamb, right? Because, well, so he first wants to, like, call the police and tell them, like, hey, my brother's been murdered and his friends or whatever. And and I guess the, the neighbor who walked in, like, you know, called the cops and told them about him. So he's a suspect. And they, they happen to pull up and find him at the phone booth as he's, like, calling the cops about the same thing. And they're just like, hey, freeze. And, like, he, he has the gun. He, like, puts his hands up. And he has the gun that he that he took earlier, like, sticking out of his pants. And they're like, he's got a gun. And he's like, oh, shit. Like, without saying this, he's like, let me grab that for you and just put it on the ground. But he just, like, goes and reaches for the gun. And, of course, they start blasting away at him. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing. Like, this whole movie is just kind of based around miscommunication and dumb, illogical shit like that. Yeah, like, oh, fuck, like he's he- got a gun. Like, the first thing you're going to do is reach for it. Like, exactly. without saying anything? Exactly. Like, he, ar- he he already had his hands up. 
Like, all you had to do was just chill there. Like, is the point that he's just a good old boy from Iowa and he doesn't know any better or how, like, cops work? But I don't know. Like it's, it's they don't have cops stupid. there. They have bad new metal. The, they have like. You know, uh, <laughs> hey, so wait a minute. This whole movie kind of feels like like Robert Tuggle. Is that the director's name? Richard Tuggle. Richard Tuggle. Excuse me. My Sorry. boy Dick Tuggle. Yeah, Dick Tug Job. He like it feels like he he watched one action movie. Like he grew up in in bumfuck Iowa as well. You know, like this is his self insert character and like well, then he watched this... death wish and made this yeah <laughs> yeah because like he also has no idea how like how hostages work because of the next scene okay the yeah that brings up illogical part number four in like 10 minutes because <laughs> like what he what he pulls his gun quote unquote at the cops he sees a dude on a motorbike puts his gun up to him he's like hey we gotta get out of here and he's like hell yeah and good thing this guy's like fucking travis pastrana because he's just like <laughs> navigating the city like it's nothing yeah. well like why would you why would you tell the guy hey uh drive me on your bike like just, be like, just give me your bike maybe he didn't uh, know how to drive a motorbike well then get a car like maybe he didn't know how to drive a car there wasn't a car, like, in the general area, but, I mean, like you said before, I mentioned that there's a distinct lack of urgency and also just lack of, like... Common sense. I don't know, give a shit factor from AMH here. I mean, everybody sucks. Everybody in this movie sucks. But, I mean, he's supposed to be a kid, a relatively sheltered kid, and he comes to the big, scary wor world of L.A. where they LA. do coke and listen to dad rock. But... <laughs> Like when they go to all these different nightclubs and there's just variations of David Bowie playing. <laughs> and he, I mean, he fucking kills somebody. He like carjacks somebody. He takes someone hostage and he never seems that like bothered over. He's always just got this, you can look at the poster and he's just a still shot of him with this bewildered look and it never leaves his face. He's just got like yeah. this, huh? Yeah. He's he just very, mouth breathes the entire movie. He's extremely one note. <laughs> like he, you would never would have known that this guy had never killed somebody because he doesn't really show anything about. It. He's like, oh wow, okay. He's like, wow, that was neat. That guy's head just blew off. Oh, and he also there's a. I think we forgot to mention when he's on the plane. There's this like, <laughs> there's this girl that looks like the drummer of Green Day with like <laughs> spiked blonde hair, <laughs> and she just he has a sex dream about her. <laughs> And then wakes up, and she's like, so what are you dreaming about? You want to come stay with me? You think you're going to get bored in L.A.? And he's and he doesn't say a single word. He just sits there and is like, ugh. <laughs> and, she's, and she's like, oh, yeah, you want to come and fuck me? And well, like, also, whoa, whoa. also, he has this sex dream about her before we see her. Like, he just, like, gets up and, and starts walking to the bathroom on the plane. And then she's like, hey. Come on, and they like go in there together and start making and they, out. They funk, and and then you see him wake up, and then and then you see her. It's super confusing. Yeah, he didn't even pull his tic tac wiener out yet. Then he wakes up. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Like Justin said, like he's literally not saying anything, and she's just like, "You wanna fuck?" She's like, "I oh, like fuck. quiet guys. I want you to fuck me." Again, this feels kind of like a, this style. feels kind of like a, a self insert character, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, then he wakes up. And, uh, what you dreaming about? And the, like Justin said, he barely says a fucking word. It's like the opening scene of an RPG <laughs> where like the other character is <laughs> saying everything and he's like picking a line every five minutes. Oh yeah, and uh, just back to the motorbike thing before I forget. Uh, like, before I forget I, this. <laughs> I just thought it was fucking hilarious. Like during the chase, it just cuts to them sitting in a field just being total bros. He's yeah. like, they, they yeah. think you did it, man. You got to get out there and clear your name, bro. Yeah, he's like, he's, he's giving the guy, like, the entire rundown. Like, at some point, off screen, he must have stopped him and like, hey, man, I'm sorry about that, but here's what's going on. I'm sorry <laughs> to put a gun to your head. Like, yeah, like, three minutes I'm ago. sorry I kidnapped you under threat of death, but you understand, right? You know how it is. And he totally understood and knew how it was. <laughs> he totally did. He's just like, dumb, man, you can't go to the cops. They're going to catch you. Oh, bro, man, I'm sorry. Good luck with your shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then you'd never I hope hear if from I ever kidnap again. someone, they're as understanding as this guy is. Yeah, You're so non-threatening that it's, I'm not even offended. <laughs> yeah, this guy gets a gold fucking star for cool motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you do. So what happens next? 
uh, he goes to see Diz at at her. Does, does her he? Job. Imme- oh yeah, he he immediately goes to see Diz, um, which is the scene girl from the plane's name. <laughs> And yeah. she works at the beanery. Which, I don't know, we, we were just giggling at the beanery the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, they what got we, beans on tap. <laughs> what if we kissed at the beanery? <laughs> and it's not even really a coffee shop. At Barney's it just looks, Beanery. <laughs> it just looks like a diner. Just, yeah, it's just a it's, diner. Like, got like Dex she Jetster's brings out a guy's here. order. She brings out a guy's order and it's a fucking burger with a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> It's like, here's a oh, chalky for you, King. Yeah, it's supposed to be, like, a, a rock theme. So it's like, where's my Chuck Berry burger, bitch? Oh, he wanted a Buddy Holly burger. <laughs> a Buddy Holly yeah. burger, excuse how, me. The other guy you, had the Chuck Berry burger. How dare you misrepresent a single line in this film? The Ooh, other guy yeah. had the Chuck Berry burger. Excuse the fuck out of me. Unbelievable. Cock. Uh, the, <laughs> meanwhile, in the background, we got, um, I don't know why, the, the main villain, Gaddis... Whenever I see him, for some reason, I only think about his stupid-ass vampire character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Is that the main villain? Uh, I guess technically, yeah. It's it's his age, dude. It's his it's his smack, bro. Jeff Cover, NCIS Los Angeles' own <laughs> Jeff Cover. Yeah. Okay, okay. If you look at his IMDb, <laughs> it's nothing but just him being an asshole in TV shows. Like, they always cast them as, like, the super creepy guy, which I guess is why he was perfect in Buffy, but... He kind of looks like Willem Dafoe a little bit. Like, a little bit of a crossover between Willem Dafoe and Steven Tyler. Yeah, like like a chunkier version <laughs> of that. Because he's got, like, a football field-sized mouth. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be pretty great if there was just one part in there where he, he bursts into a room and is like, Walk this way! <laughs> So yeah, he's he's trying to find out who took his H. Meanwhile, uh, you know his the, that sick street savvy H that AM, AMH knows so much Hello, about. Hello, fellow criminals. <laughs> he he goes to visit Diz at her house, and she lives in like fucking Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh w- wait, but not before she just like quits her job on the spot to go help him. This guy that she like met earlier for that three day, three like, minutes at an airport. Yeah. Well, that yeah. wasn't her real job. She's an actress. But that's bullshit we find out later. Yeah, we yeah, find out lying. later. Well, she's like an actress in the way that everyone is an actress in L.A. that they thought about it LA. once, but they've never like bothered trying. It's like, oh, I auditioned for like one lo- for one role and lost it, and now I give up. Okay. But she has like a giant misshapen pink house, and it's just filled to the brim with stuffed penguins looks like two chains is trap house <laughs> yeah they're living like fucking neon genesis and then um he calls the cops again there right and he's trying to explain the situation he's like they blew me out of a phone booth practically and it's like that's not what happens at all uh-uh. <laughs> you fucking reached for your gun and got shot at like a dumbass he calls the cops there's just constant miscommunication like he just makes himself look guiltier and guiltier and uh, rightfully so the cops don't know if he's telling the truth or not so diz has this idea well you got to find we got to find this guy to get his give his h back you know then he'll leave you alone and so her idea is to basically go to every heroin dealer that she knows in the whole fucking city <laughs> to alert him of their presence i guess because that's what you what? want to do when a murderer is after you. It kind of reminds me of that Always Sunny episode where, uh, <laughs> where, where they get Dee the and Dennis go and buy crack. <laughs> one uh, crack, please. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fucking Oh, I episode. thought you were going to say the one where they like get the mobs uh, cocaine and they have to sell it. <laughs> after that, though, they hit the fucking 80s high life here. Like, she takes them to a clothing store and just uh, makes them try to look as cool as possible. And he did, right, boys? Okay, so right, like, right, right. here's my thing, right? It's like this is this is where like the like the super stretched out montage starts, where like yeah, like they like they cool him up, like they dye his hair black, they get him some aviators and he's, a leather jacket. He's pretty cool. And now as he's ice. like, he's like he is Coolsville, baby doll. Now like, and so they're like bouncing around from place to place, and he's like. He's, like, threatening people now and, like, being all tough. And there was just this total disconnect where I'm like, when did this farmer boy turn into this cool guy? Dude. Like, there was no, like, transition. <laughs> right? He's just cool all of a sudden. He's he a better looks- actor than she was. He looks like he's in <laughs> Greece. Yeah. <laughs> he tries it was, to to- it was totally out of nowhere. He's got, like, those fingerless gloves and he's just, like, rocking it. <laughs> At one it point was- they jaywalk and the cop's like, hey, there's a crosswalk over there. He's like, I know. Just trying to be, like, all fucking cool. 
<laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, officer. I'll, 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 we'll do it again. And then they walk away. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as out of nowhere as his relationship with Diz. Like, I, I had no idea why he got cool all of a sudden. I have no idea why Diz has suddenly dedicated her life to helping this stranger. Oh, and we, we jump back and forth with that, though. Like, she instantly latches herself onto him. Like, he finds her at the diner and is like, hey, I need you to quit your job and come help me because I'm... I'm wanted for murder, but I didn't do it. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm horny. And then she leaves, gets in, the, and then sees on TV later that he's wanted for murder. She's like, I don't want to do it. You're wanted for murder. And it's like, yeah, we said that. <laughs> and then she's back to, like, wanting to take a bullet from him, him again. And I'm like, yeah, this cause doesn't make any sense. That's like, that's like a miscommunication there for, like, two seconds. He's like, no, no, but I didn't do it, though. And she's like, oh, okay. And then that's resolved immediately. And then they start working the town again together. Like <laughs> there's a there's a bunch of shit like that that's that's resolved immediately. Like um like so earlier, uh he gets on the bus and he hacks into the bus. Right, he like uses this <laughs> knife that he keeps on him to like uh, he unscrew life like into uh, the bus. Yeah, like he like uses the, it to like unscrew the the nails on the on the vent, and so he takes his duffel bag and, and hides it in in the vent on this bus. Oh yeah, real and, quick. Uh, just speaking of the knife, he's always got a knife strapped to his ankle the whole time. Oh yeah, movie. he keeps yeah. he keeps that motherfucking thing upon him. <laughs> he's got his <laughs> Rambo knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just established in one shot earlier that he's really good at throwing a knife. Like he's like fucking bullseye with this thing. <laughs> he never misses. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning um, of the movie, during the credits, he just like whips a knife into a target and just. And that's hits the it. only time he does that until the very end of the movie. Like, I, t I completely forgot about it until it came up again. But anyway, um, yeah, he so he hacks into the bus, right, to hide his duffel bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then later in the movie, he comes back to get it, and, like, he opens the vent, and the duffel bag's gone. And he's like, oh, shit. And then he opens the vent next to it, and it's right there. And it's like, well, fucking, what was the point of that? <laughs> like, he like oh, no, it's gone. In. He could have reached in and pulled it out. He could have, like, looked in to see where it was, because, you know... With, like, an open hatch like that on the bus, there's no way that it would have moved in transit or anything. <laughs> yeah. How to like, manufacture tension without there actually being any tension. What? It was It was literally, like, 20 seconds worth of tension. Like, come, it was like, oh, no, it's gone. Oh, no, wait, it's right here. If I can... <laughs> no. Why? It's, like, a foot and a half to the <laughs> left. And then, uh... But, yeah, after that, they just ensue a club-hopping montage with... Not really a montage. They just kind of go to four different places in a row. Yeah. And it's too it, long to be a montage. Yeah, exactly. Well, like we're it's jumping an back anti montage. And, we're jumping back and forth between them trying to sell heroin as well as this like crackhead that the main villain knows, like trying to scope them out or trying to find them. And it's just a succession of these different nightclubs where they. Like, everybody looks really seedy, and they all look like punks, man, but then they're playing shit that's on, like, 97.1, like, classic rock <laughs> radio now. Yeah, that shit was hard back then. <laughs> that was, like, anal cunt back then. <laughs> Come on, in 1986, <laughs> no, there was harder shit than that. <laughs> no, I know. This Dude, wasn't, like, get, the 30s. <laughs> it didn't get harder than Steely Dan. Yeah, all the, all the females were showing ankles in those clubs. <laughs> <laughs> but all all it really served was like it just made me really sad because I want to go to a fucking concert, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Big F. <laughs> Wes wants to go to a grindcore show. <laughs> I will see fucking anything at the masquerade this at this point. Anything. Anything. My I think one of my favorite lines in the movies is um when she's introducing him to like one of the heroin dealers like who the fuck is this guy and like this is the epitome of the movie of him just being totally out of character and just like trying to act as cool as possible it's like who the fuck am i i'm the guy with the 10 keys of smack that's who the fuck i am who the fuck are you <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like whoa it's like whoa. save that line for mark Wahlberg, dude <laughs> it's like whoa AMH. that's a very Wahlberg line <laughs> you're right oh. this is kind of like a baby version of the departed a little bit <laughs> that that whole scene right there is probably the r rating honestly <laughs> okay and yeah. you know what like there's also all all the all the meanwhile uh there are these dudes that are like chasing uh jeff uh cower Cowerborough or coward whatever. yeah jeff there Marlboro. are these dudes that are chasing him and like eventually there's like a shootout set up where like you know uh amh tells the cops he's like hey uh, the real bad guy's gonna gonna be there. Uh, meet me. And, Before and, and that, then... 
there's like more shit that doesn't make sense because the whole goal for them was to lure him so they can speak with him to give him his his drugs back, right? Basically, so they will stop fucking with him. He comes up to them at a club with a gun, then Anthony Michael Hall just grabs a bottle and busts it over his face and runs away. Yeah, there's like a so he like tells the cops that he that he's gonna meet uh Jeff Jeff Coward man there and they're like, <laughs> Okay, and so he gets there and And then there are just like other dudes there that like Fuck shit. I don't know how to explain it because I had no idea what was happening. They're, like I was like, I don't know who these people are, what their goal is. Like there were just dudes there that were just fucking shit up for, for both the yeah. protagonist and the antagonist. Yeah, I don't know was, what was going on. This was a triangle between AMH and his girl, uh the main villain dude, and then the cops, and then they just like ham fist in this other subplot of these two corrupt DEA agents that were trying to get their hands on the drugs as well. But I don't know why they just kind of start fucking with them. I guess to just get the drugs for themselves, but they don't really establish anything for them. They're just kind of there. And then the one DA agent kills the other one, and then it's just him trying to get the drugs. Oh, that whole thing is just convoluted as fuck. Well, it's it's also it's that like we don't find out that they're that they are corrupt cops until like almost the very end of the movie. But even then, we don't find out that they're cops at all until just a little bit before that so like the whole time i'm like who the fuck are these guys yeah it's true it doesn't explain them it's like a cat and cat and mouse actually yeah and well and there are also there are also like so many different scenes where one of those guys that's that's you know seemingly unaffiliated with everyone else just shows up out of nowhere and starts shooting and i'm like when did this guy get here and and then like um the main villain guy he finds Pee Wee's playhouse, and he's like, oh, this is definitely her house. And then he fucking, like, reaches <laughs> through the window like Michael Myers, <laughs> and she was, like, just sitting in front of it, and then he kidnaps her. And then Anthony Michael Hall is trying to chase after him while being chased by the DEA agents. So, yeah, it just gets so fucked up in the third act. It's yeah, just all over the place. It kind of went off the rails halfway through. For I as- kind of lost track of what was going on. For 100%. as stupidly simple as the plot was... They did not need to introduce the DA agents, like, at all. Yeah, I was like, why do we need the dirty cops? <laughs> like, they contribute nothing to this story. This triangle cat and mouse game wasn't enough. <laughs> Were they trying to make, like, a three-hour Goodfellas epic here? <laughs> they it, turned they, it into a... They took a note from uh, Rob Schneider's uh, advice and made it, made it a rectangle of love, you know? I told yeah. you, this is like a baby version of The Departed to me. It kind of, of is, like crooked cops and you know, I mean, drug what, what, trade and what kind of movie do you have uh, you know for an action movie of the 80s if you don't have a crooked cop in there somewhere you know I mean That's true Terminator where you have good cops but they just get killed pretty much this movie could have ended at any point in the middle where when he finally <laughs> got in contact with that one guy he's like yeah I left the drugs in this building go get it and leave me alone and then they could have left L.A., the dude would have had his, like, fucking million dollars worth of heroin, and then they never would have seen AMH again. He could have fucked back off. Fucked back off to Iowa. Like, is, is once he has his drugs back, is he really going to put any time and effort into finding that kid? Probably not. Like, <laughs> they could have just, like, got away scot-free, right? Yeah, I, I, it took me a second. I did a little bit of a double take when it's like, oh, the cops are no longer after AMH now. They're just like... Yeah, at the, so at the just, very end, good now. all of the stupid convoluted shit comes to a head. They kill the villain guy, which Justin said earlier is probably the most graphic shot in the movie, just that fucking shotgun blast. And then him and Diz just walk away. He's yeah, like, okay. they're, they're like, dead in the building. They're dead in the building, officer. And then the cops go in, and then they just walk away. And yeah, the he's literally like, roll. there's two dead bodies in there. And they're like, okay. And then they leave, and then they're like, well. Yeah, he was still trying credits. to act like a cool guy about it, too. He was like, yeah, there's two dead bodies in there. And then the chick's like, oh, you're so cool. And then, <laughs> so then they just walk away. It's like, you're so cool. You want to listen to Napalm Death and fuck, and then the movie ends. Oh, and speaking of, speaking of, of Diz... Uh, you know, before the climax, you know, that we got our second act low point, uh, where she like bears her soul to AMH. <laughs> where I started she's to get like, bored. She, she's like, I'm not really an actor. I lied to you. Uh, and, and like, she's like, my name's not even really Diz. It's like Darlene. 
Darlene, yeah, and I'm like, wow, yeah, I I really believe that your birth certificate actually said Diz on <laughs> I, it. I, I never would have guessed that was a nickname. <laughs> you call me by my government name. <laughs> Only she the police call name. me that. <laughs> yeah. Um, her Catholic and yeah, also, name. <laughs> Jeff, what's his name, also has a thing for, like, giving uh, AMH the upper hand for no fucking reason. He does it a lot in this movie, but, like, um... Like, uh, in the shootout at the at the end of the movie in, in the warehouse, um, like, he, he is above, like, he's on the second level, and he's, like, looking down at AMH, and AMH doesn't know he's there until he, like, you know, drips blood on him, but, and then he looks up. But, like, he had, he didn't know he was there before. He had plenty of time to shoot AMH, and he just didn't do it. And so AMH shoots him, he falls down, but, but he's good later, but then he, he... He, like, even though he got shot in the stomach, he still, like, you know, leans against a, a, a wall or something, and, and he points his gun at AMH, whose, whose own gun has, like, fallen a couple feet away. And he's like, think, you, think you're quicker than your brother? Think you can grab it before I shoot you? Like, just fucking shoot him. Like, it, it existed only to create tension, but it made no sense for the villain to even well, give him the opportunity. But no, also, he got shot in the stomach, so, like, what the fuck is he still doing? It was yeah. all about misdirection, man, because AMH had his bowie knife in his shoe. <laughs> Again, that I totally forgot about. Well, he was trying to reach for his gun. He's like, go ahead, shoot me. You think you're quick enough? Meanwhile, he's, he's actually pulling some clever hand tricks because he pulls out his Rambo knife from his leg and just <laughs> chucks it into his fucking heart. <laughs> and he's stopped for good. <laughs> he's dead as shit. Totally forgot. I just that that just escaped you. Yeah, <laughs> it was out of the bounds of my mind. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys have any more thoughts? No, nah, no, nah, I got I'm through just, everything I wanted to say. It's just yeah. kind of <laughs> awkwardly out of place. It's like if Cleverbot wrote an action movie, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. It, yeah, it re- it's like the most generic action movie I can think of, honestly. Like, But I, it's it's pretty funny, though, in a lot of parts. I mean, I know it's definitely a lot better with us watching it together, but it was, it was enjoyable enough. Um, I guess that brings us to what we would give it. I'd say it's just such... A, it's so middle of the road that I'm just going to give it a five. Uh, I'll give it a... Thir- there's nothing spectacularly horrible about it, but there's nothing good yeah. about it either. I'd give it a four. I'm gonna just barely give it give it a four. Like, it's almost a five. But yeah, like a lot of the illogical shit that we mentioned like brings it down. Otherwise it's just so average. Oh, uh, I was I was actually like getting close to a three and then I was like, oh, it's not that horrible. I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah, it's enjoyable enough. It's it it is a film that exists. Yes it does. <laughs> it exists, it uh Kill another precious nugget of time between cradle and grave. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Great. Perfect. <laughs> oh, thanks. That sucked 90 minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> Closer to the void. <laughs> so, um, that brings us to our good thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. Uh, my boy, Lieutenant Delgado. He's like the most over the top police lieutenant that you could think of. And it was just, like, great the whole time. At one point, <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall's talking to him, like, about the situation. And he's like, well, kid, if this is true, you're way out of bounds. They're going to blow your like, ass. Oh! <laughs> We're like, oh! They're, like, they're going to blow your ass away. Uh, he did the he's, thing. He's, he, he, he was really enjoyable to watch. Like, every time he was in a scene, it was just really I, fun I to me. love it when 80s action movies drop the title. It's always great. Especially yeah. when it's a character like that. You're way out of bounds. I loved when Darth <laughs> Vader was like, no, it's the return of the Jedi. You know, that was a cool part. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, lo- I loved it in Terminator 2 when they were like, hey, uh, John, what, what day is it? And they were like, oh, it's uh, Tuesday, Judgment Day. <laughs> it's Terminator 2, Judgment Day. <laughs> It's also Terminator like, Tuesday. <laughs> Judgment <laughs> Oh, <Boo>. dude. <laughs> I have a definitive good thing. Oh, go ahead. The final kill of when Anthony Michael Hall kills Jeff Cover with the knife. That was kind of sick. Right, that was pretty hype. He that just, part like, fucks it in his heart. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I would have liked it more if I hadn't completely forgotten about the knife, you know? Well, that's the thing. It's about misdirection. Um, I guess I'll say, uh, Jeff Kobe beef, 
Um, I think he was Kobe. B. He was Jeff he Kobe was, Bryant. R.I.P. Yeah, <laughs> he he was probably the best in his role, um, and I found him to be the most believable. I agree. Um, he essentially plays that same character on every like crime yeah. TV show that he's in. Like yeah. he, they hire this guy to play that character for everything he's in, <laughs> which like is another thing that adds to the the genericness of it. <laughs> You know, it's funny, uh, uh, so I don't have any trivia for this, but I did read that, um, uh, that AMH was in this movie because, like, he, you know, he was always being typecast as, like, a nerdy guy, and he, he wanted to break out of that a little bit, and then, yeah, they, they just did that with, with, uh, Jeff Kobe. How, uh, how did that work out for him? Uh, you tell me. I mean, he's steadily had a career since then, so I guess mm. it's not, not that bad. Yeah, could have been Wor- worse. He's a working <laughs> actor. That's true. He is a working actor in Hollywood, and uh, the Dead Zone TV show is pretty cool. He's probably got many monies, so oh, definitely, a respectable man. amount of monies. He was John Hughes' bitch for like 10 years. <laughs> He's got mad money. Uh, so, <laughs> that's yeah, it? That's it. What are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching The Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Hell wow. yeah. Uh, that's one that I probably haven't seen since I was a kid. <laughs> but uh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty hyped. <laughs> Finally time. Well, all right. Just uh, remember, B-rollers stay in bounds. <laughs> California. 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 Hold on. You dig on both versus... That's it. What, we some kind of... B-roll boys.